The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, hello and good day, everybody. This is uh, Scott Morrison with uh, NPE. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Business Development and thrilled to be on our webinar here uh, today with Startup Active. Um, Startup Active is one of our, our key and our flagship partners here at NPE. Um, I'm sure many of you have heard of them already. They make uh, really the world's best uh, websites for fitness entrepreneurs and uh, thrilled to be doing another webinar with them. Uh, we have Andy Bradbury in the line as one of the co-founders of uh, Startup Active. Uh, Andy, how, how are you doing today? I'm really good. Thanks, Scott. Uh, nice and busy day here with you guys. Good. Well, we appreciate your time today. I know you're a busy guy and uh, taking a few hours of your day to uh, to spend some time with NPE customers. We, we really appreciate you doing that. Thank you very much. No problem. Good. Well, we're gonna uh, really excited for what Andy's laid out here for you today. Um, as you see in the screen, we're gonna talk about how to increase your website conversion by five percent. Uh, let me kind of give you a little bit of the background story of this. Um, Andy and his team have been building websites for years. Um, they're pros at it. Um, they know it works and they know it doesn't work. Um, and one of the things that we have been most excited about what um, Startup Active is doing is the way they structure their websites isn't just a brochure to give you a bunch of information to your to the you know the big wide world of the, the internet. Uh, rather, it's specific to uh, generate leads and turn those leads into sales. At the end of the day, it's all about conversions through your website. Um, just as all the things we teach you in NPE, we want you to know your numbers, follow the instructions, track the different pieces that you're working on within your business. Um, we love uh, the way Startup Active has done that and set that up using the website. So we asked them today to put together a presentation on that. Um, Andy's got six points on how to do this. Two of the keys I think are great to pay attention to is one, the structure of your website. Um, and second, why you should be blogging, um, why blogging is so uh, um, such a, a great piece in getting your content out there. But also Andy's going to share some of the benefits and the things that you get coming back in the door once you're blogging on a regular basis. So um, Andy, they didn't sign up to listen to me talk, so <laughs> I'm going to turn <laughs> over to you here in a second. Um, folks, uh, I say this in every webinar. I sincerely mean it. Please um, close every other window you got open on your computer right now. Uh, if you're in the gym, get to a quiet corner. If you can be in your office, close the door. If you're checking Facebook now, and I know about 20 of you guys are doing it at the moment, um, stop, pay attention. Andy has incredible information for you, and if you take it and you implement it, you could really uh, change the course of your business today for the better. So uh, with that, Andy, uh, let it take it over to you, um, let you get it going from there, and uh, look forward to hearing what you put together today. Perfect. Thank you, Scott. Um, I'm really pleased to be here today, guys. Um, so thank you for your time. Um, as Scott mentioned, um, we are specialists in the fitness industry. Um, and to just tell you a little bit about us, um, we have been working in the fitness industry for about three years now specifically, and uh, we've built hundreds of fitness websites. And most importantly, we've been tracking how different layouts engage your audience. So people looking to lose weight, people looking to improve their health, improve their strength. Your ideal customer, they are the people we've been testing from website to website. And what I'm going to pass on to you today is the things we've learned over the years to really push your website conversions to the next level. Um, so just a little bit about us. I founded the company in 2009 with uh, Josh, who you can see there in the top left. We've currently got four guys working with us, uh, with two more starting next week, and we employ specialists. So each of the people in my team are very, very good at their role. So they aren't generalists who touch different areas. Each of them works very specifically in designing or developing. Um, the two new juniors I'm taking on are specialists in, again, design and development. So we're really good at giving guidance. If there's anything you're unsure about that I touch on here today, just follow up with me after the call. Uh, I'm around all the time, uh, as I'm sure you guys are in your businesses. So uh, just follow up with me and I'll be happily, uh, happy to talk you through anything. So who do we work with? Um, we work with fitness professionals, just like you guys on the webinar today, all around the world. Um, we attended last year's mega training events, uh, which were really, really good. We're going to this year's events, and we're also involved in several different communities from uh, the Czech group. We've worked with several Czech practitioners to the Strong First community. So we are very heavily involved in fitness and 
we really enjoy it, which I think is important. And uh, excuse the bold title there, but we are currently uh, growing really fast. So we are taking on between four and six new fitness websites every week. And uh, in short, we know exactly what we're doing. So just to re-emphasize, if you have any questions at all, don't be afraid to, at the end of this session, I'll be running a short Q&A, uh, just ask the question, or I'm around for some one-on-one -on -one time if you like. So I'm going to take you through um, in the next 20 slides or so all uh, some problems all fitness professionals face. You're highly qualified professionals. You know what works well for your clients um, and you know what your clients need to do. What you need to be doing on your website is teasing your knowledge, not giving away the whole game plan. So making it very clear that you know exactly what you're doing. Don't overcomplicate the language on your websites um, or anything you do online because, you know, we've worked with people from uh, biometric specialists to nutrition experts and you've got very specialist knowledge. What you need to make sure you're doing on your website is getting it across that you definitely know what you're talking about, but don't waste your time um, overcomplicating the language because that turns people off more often than it does. And as a rule of thumb, you should have around 300 words per page on your website. That's worth noting down. So 300 words per page. And that's the ideal reading length for keeping your audience engaged, but also importantly for Google as well. I'm going to run a, a little bit of an interactive uh, exercise here. So <laughs> technology uh, pending. Um, I'm going to flash a website up, um, which isn't our website, I'll emphasize. And I'm going to ask you what you think the owner of this website wants you to do. So I'm going to flash something up now. Just take a look and then I'll run a poll afterwards uh, getting your feedback. Okay, so let me just run this poll. Uh, so something will show up on your uh, screens in a second. Um, if you just quickly answer that, that's uh, in front of you at the moment. And just let me know what you think the business owner wants you to do. Um, because uh, we will just uh, review that in a second. Uh, I can see a couple more of you are, are waiting to vote. So uh, just press the button, guys, which you think is relevant. Perfect. Okay. So uh, most of you um, got it right. Um, it's basically, um, he, he's got no idea what he wants his audience to do. Um, some of you um, thought that uh, he should get you to click through to read a magazine. Some of you think he should click through to uh, read other pages on his website, but most of you have got no idea. And it's really important that you put yourself in your visitor's shoes. You don't want to get that over to your own visitors because that's where you lose people. It's really important. So what I'm going to show you next is one of our websites. I'm going to put us under the spotlight. <laughs> um, so I'll run the same test. I'll give you five seconds, and then I'm going to ask you a question. So what do you think our client here wants you to do on their website? OK, so I'm just going to run a quick poll on the second one there. So just tell me what you think our client there wants you to do. Uh, what, what do you think the obvious call to action is? I can see another couple of you are about to vote. Perfect. OK, so uh, re I'm, I'm relieved to say um, all of you thought the call to action on that website is to book in a, a for a complimentary consultation. Now, that's that's a really um, fun exercise I like to do. And it's uh, not to get across that we build great websites. It's more you've got to put yourself in your um, potential customers shoes and say, OK, what do, what do I want to get them to do on the website? It's not about giving them all of the options and hoping they go in the right place. Everything you do is pointing them to um, a certain direction where you want them to go. So here's some of the most common problems that you can all read. So I'll, I'll let you read through these points here. Um, the most common problems uh, you guys face. Um, the most important points are really point four and point seven. Um, Point four is about giving your end user some direction. You need to give the potential clients of yours some guidance to, hey, I want you to book in for a consultation or to download my ebook, which then goes into Infusionsoft. So give them some real guidance. Um, 
Point seven is making sure that you stand out, you look better than your competition. And this is something a lot of people fail on that we start working with is they think their website's just fine. Uh, it, it's really not. You, you can't relax with these sorts of things. Even with our own website, we refresh them once a year, once every two years. It's really important you stay ahead of the game. So just be really critical with yourself and, and take a step back. I can see we've got some of our clients on the phone, uh, on the webinar today, uh, and I'm sure um, all of our clients would be happy to uh, to talk to any of you. So uh, give me a shout if you'd like that that reference. But I think it's really important you're critical with yourself. And um, just two quick points. Uh, one of the models we follow um, with all of our websites are the ADA model. So ADA is uh, an old but well-tested marketing method. And the idea is to grab the, your visitors' attention when they land on the website, give them the information they're looking for. So, hey, we're weight loss specialists. You need to pay attention to us here. Um, evoke some sort of desire. So what we usually do there is show them a, a really great before and after photo. So Give them the social proof. You guys, you're, you know, your NPE, you understand that you need the social proof. It's just as important on your website. And finally, get them to take action. So have that big bright button and say, click here. This is what we want you to do. And the other point I wanted to quickly cover was have a content strategy. So it's a really boring sort of phrase, but really important. Content is everything, but don't go overboard with what you're doing. Stick to 300 to 500 words per page, uh, as I mentioned earlier, and you'll be in a great place for Google, but more importantly, keeping your visitors engaged with you. Now, I'm going to quickly take you through the um, six things we've learned over the past few years. We've learned a lot more than six things, obviously, but we've stripped everything back and said, what are the six most important things to a website's success? And what I'm about to show you now, I'm going to also circulate in a PDF in the morning. Um, but feel free to take notes and then follow up with me have, if you have any questions around any specific things. So point one, the website is, uh, it needs to look awesome. That sounds pretty obvious, um, but your website needs to look amazing and reflect who you are as a group um, or as a, as a fitness professional. Um, whatever you do, do not build your own website. Um, so we've had a lot of people approach us um, with Wix websites thinking they're okay and I'll cover the points uh, over the next few slides on why you shouldn't do that, but at a high level, it's because they won't work on mobile or they won't load fast enough. Um, and the website won't be an asset to you. It will be a liability and actually lose you clients because you get one shot and the website most of the time is the first point of call. So make sure that you're spending the time uh, making your website look awesome. Um, before I uh, I took on designers in my team, I used to design some of the websites and that was a huge mistake. I, I'm not a designer. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a good uh, managing director and, and good at giving direction. Um, I shouldn't be designing websites. So you need to reflect that on yourself too. Point two, just going back to the five second rule, um, what do you want your visitors to do? Really think through that. What's the primary thing you want them to do? Um, and then everything on your website should point back to that, whether it's to get them to call you, book a consultation, uh, drop in their details for a free uh, ebook. You really need to think about that and then drive everything to that. Once you've decided, just be consistent throughout the entire website with that. Um, this is um, New Wave Fitness. Uh, New Wave Fitness is run by Hutt in Dallas. Um, Hutt really wanted to get across the social proof of his website right away. So his team's really friendly. Uh, they work with um, a lot of people who are often quite old um, in terms of the average age. Um, and they wanted to get across the social proof right away, but also get people to step through the process. So step one, step two, step three. This is exactly what I want you to do. And that works really effectively with, uh, with Hutt. So the other part of it is understanding the community and getting them to take the steps necessary um, to take action for you. Point three, uh, conversion is king. So this is a zoomed out um, screenshot of the website I was just showing you. Um, coming back to my first point again briefly, getting your websites to do exactly what you want them to do is the most important thing. Um, a website which doesn't bring any in leads is, is not a tool for you. So as you can see here, the top two circles are um, get your free con consultation here. Um, that drives quite a lot of traffic to the guys at Urban Fitness. Um, and then if that fails, 
on the right hand side there we've got a form which is linked up to infusionsoft so they drop in their details and once they drop in their details they get plugged straight into infusionsoft and i'll cover that uh, in a more detail on the next slide um if we've still failed to capture their details there um we then go on to find out a little bit about us uh, about the team um, and I think that's really important that you then click through and find out a little bit about the, the fitness professional you'll be working with. And then finally, we've got a, uh, a standard newsletter catch, uh, capture at the bottom there. Um, point four, um, make sure you've got an opt-in sequence. So, um, for example, on this, the first form on the home page uh, is linked to Infusionsoft. So they drop in their name and email. Once they've dropped in their name and email, they then go through to a second uh, landing page, if you'd like, um, which is the second screenshot there. Um, this is your chance to be really bold because you've already caught the details of the potential lead. So what you want to do is just go for it. Just ask for all of the information you might want to capture. Um, with the Urban Fitness guys, we, we've gone all out and asked for their name, uh, what brought them to the website, um, just so you can capture all that information. If they leave on this page, it's really not the end of the world um, because you've already got their details. If they fill in the details here, more importantly, you've got a more qualified lead. And then finally, uh, point three there, make sure you have a success page. So if somebody lands on the success page, what we do with all of our clients is we're able to track these statistics and say, um, hey, you know, this is a really effective campaign. So, um, you know, it really works. Uh, why don't we look at tweaking it or launching a new uh, a new landing page or something? Um, get yourself into the responsive mindset. So literally hundreds of millions of people access social media from their mobiles, from their tablets every single day. Um, our latest statistics show that a huge percentage of website visitors um, or in fact visiting um, the website themselves from a mobile or a tablet, um, almost 50%. Um, so you just need to make sure your website looks great on any device. Uh, don't penalize your visitors for visiting you on, on a device of their choice. So maybe they're grabbing a, a quick chance on lunch to, to look at your website. So really make sure that you're focusing on them and giving them uh, the best experience they can have. And point six, um, if you haven't caught their details on the home page, it's, uh, it's fine, but make sure you do get them to take some form of action by any means that you can. Um, so for the urban fitness guys here, it's about a consultation as the primary call to action, but failing to get them to do that, um, you can see here on the right hand side, uh, we're encouraging them to either give the, the gym a call that itself, um, drop in their details for an ebook, um, or even, you know, drop by. We've got the address um, on the contacts page and in the footer. So maybe someone's out. Remember, they could be on a mobile phone uh, looking for the studio. So uh, make sure you drop the address in and that you're easy to find. Um, so those are the six important points. The six most important points we've taken from the last couple of years, really focusing on A-B testing and working out what works and what doesn't work. Um, so now that your site's really awesome, um, how are you going to get get it found? Um, your your conversion rate is is increased by a huge amount, so uh, you need to make sure that you're being found. Now there are a couple of ways of doing this. One of them is called on-site optimization, which is blogging on your website and tweaking your content. The other one is off-site optimization, so getting yourself featured on, um, for example, news, local newspapers or local websites. Um, that's a really great way to get people coming back to your website, but more importantly, getting ranked on Google. Um, what I'm going to show you over the next couple of slides is the importance of blogging. So if you can find three to five hours per week to do this yourself, then you can do it. We do this for a huge majority of our, our clients because we're very good at it. So um, just give me a shout if you're wondering how to do it. Um, my first uh, piece of advice for blogging is start local. Um, so make sure that you're ranking in a hyper local area. So if you're in uh, in Orlando, focus on a small cashment of Orlando first. So East Orlando or something like that. Just start really micro. And I think the important thing is to make sure that you're blogging about things like personal training in Orlando, 
um, personal trainer in Orlando, weight loss in Orlando, uh, nutrition in Orlando, whatever's important to your clients, the clients you're trying to catch, make sure that you're um, targeting that and, and staying hyper, hyper local. Once you've got a foothold in that area, um, for example, on this map, we would want to get you ranking for weight loss in Altrincham, which is a place here in the UK. You would expand out onto the next town. So Google then uh, sort of has an idea about what you're about. And you can expand out from there, which is what these uh, circles here indicate. And as you get a bigger and bigger foothold, it allows you to dominate and stay ahead of the competition. Um, just as with your clients, there's a big difference between training effectively and, and just going to the gym for the sake of it. It's also the same in blogging terms. So make sure you're blogging properly. Um, you need to pick keywords and phrases relevant to your business. Um, and keywords are different. So personal training and personal trainer are different keywords. So make sure you're focusing on both of those. Um, and I'll go through that on, on the next slide and you'll see a good example of that. My advice would be to write down five to eight keywords you want to target. So personal training, nutrition, boot camps, uh, small group training. They're all really important factors that you want to consider, but have no more than five to eight and make those your absolute focus. Uh, here's a case study of um, Dan Meredith over here in the UK. Uh, and feel free to write some of these phrases down um, just so you can Google them and see. But the main goal for you is to get within the top three results on Google. Um, the top three results generate more than 75% of all clicks. So getting to the top is such an important factor for you as a, as a business owner because it's an entirely different source of revenue. Um, as a rule of thumb, obviously, depending on your city, um, we say for every keyword you can get to the top four, you'll get between 100 and 150 click-throughs per month. So if you can get to the top for, say, 10 keywords, you're going to be generating at least 1,000 website visits. Um, our websites themselves generate around an 8% conversion rate. So you're looking at sort of 80 inquiries a month. So it's fairly simple math, but getting to the top for your top five to eight key phrases is incredibly important. Um, with Dan on Pure Results, we've blogged for him. Uh, he went live in January, I think. We've blogged for him every week since launch. We've also done a little bit of off-site SEO recently. Um, and here are the results for Dan. So weight loss in Portishead. Portishead is a really affluent town here in the UK. Um, as you can see, we've actually managed to get him for all top three results in Portishead. Um, and there's uh, a group in the UK called Weight Watchers. Uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, pretty big in the States, but they're, they're huge in the, uh, in the UK. And the reason for mentioning that is um, don't look at search engine optimization as this unachievable goal. Um, all of the, work, the search engines, especially Google, have put a lot of time and effort into making sure that you guys as small business owners can rank just as easily as the big guys if you apply yourself correctly. Um, so this is a great example. Dan gets a huge amount of business now from uh, his website because we've managed to get him ranking well on Google. So make sure that you do give this, uh, this a lot of your attention. It's worthwhile doing. So where's the best place to start? Um, people ask us, uh, how do you get going? And these are the most important points. Um, you need a WordPress website. I can see a couple of our guys on the phone, Paul Fetters, uh, Maurice Williams. Um, we are just building their sites at the moment for Maurice. Uh, Paul's website is live. They are in WordPress, and it's really important that if your website's in WordPress, it's really easy to tweak and change. So make sure that you, uh, you can easily change your website and put blog posts out there. Um, as I've mentioned a couple of times, pick five to eight keywords which you want to be found for on Google. Um, so for Paul, um, at tr the training spot, we make sure that uh, he's ranking for boot camps. He's ranking for personal trainers on Huntington Beach. Um, and um, he's doing really well at the moment. And uh, we're working with him on a weekly basis at the moment to make sure he's ranking well. Um, and then make sure that you're structuring your blog posts well. So in here, uh, this is what WordPress looks like for those of you that don't know. Um, I've cir circled the main points where we've referenced keywords. So at the very top there, you can see we mentioned in the title, uh, the top red circle, um, personal training in Orlando. Uh, we mention it twice in the body text. Um, just as a rule of thumb, once every 80 words, mention your keyword. 
So personal training Orlando there, once a paragraph works really well. And then at the bottom, we are using a custom plugin in WordPress. And it's really great because it uses a, a, a traffic light system. So as a, as a goal for every blog post you write, you need to get all of the lights to green and you'll have a great blog post. Um, again, I can share that plugin with anyone that's interested. So just let me know. Um, it does take a bit of time to get the perfect blog post, but if you can find those three to five hours per week, then go crazy. So as a high level guide of what I've just gone through, a uh, blog once every two weeks is a minimum uh, every week if you can. Uh, use only one keyword per post. Um, structure is everything, so make sure that you've got 300 words per blog post, as I mentioned a couple of slides ago. Um, share everything you do on social networks. So make the most of social networks. It, it's really, really great as a revenue source. And you can also download a great app called SEO Ranking. Uh, for those of you that are iPhone users, I don't know the equivalent on Android or Windows, but for iPhone users, it's, uh, it's like $3 or something. Um, you can track all of your own keywords, but more importantly, track your competitors' keywords. So just make a note of that. It's definitely worth a purchase. And you can track how you do on a week-by-week -week basis and see how your website's ranking um, over time. We hear quite often that, um, you know, I just don't have time to do this stuff. Um, we hear it a load um, and we're quite happy to, again, give you the advice or just do this for you. Um, for example, again, uh, Paul's on the phone, um, probably can't speak because it's <laughs> he's not as a panelist, but um, he, he doesn't have time. He runs a very successful and busy uh, studio. Um, so we do this on behalf of Paul um, and we work with a lot of our MP clients to make sure we do this stuff on their behalf. So if you struggle with, with time, then I definitely recommend just speak to us and we can do this for you. Um, those are the main points that I wanted to cover on this webinar. So anybody that wants um, the short slides, I'll be sending them around in the morning. Um, and uh, any questions uh, I'll be asking sort of in the next couple of minutes. So just start to ask them through the uh, the webinar here. Um, I just quickly want to ask, uh, talk you through um, a new app that I've been developing um, over the past four months now. So this is an app that allows you to track your client's progress from session to session, record their body fat, their weight loss, and their strength gains. Um, the reason that's really important is it's a unified place. So no more Excel spreadsheets to track body fat. Um, you can really quickly send reports to your clients. So it's a, a really useful um, app and uh, we are going to be launching it this month. Um, so if you want to make a note of www.activetoolkit.com, uh, www just at the top of the slide there, um, we're going to give all of you on the call today a 30-day uh, free trial. We are still deciding on the pricing, but it's going to be fairly low cost, maybe in the region of $25, $30. Um, and the idea is to really speed up the process of reporting to your clients. Um, so as you can see here, this would be the dashboard view. Um, you'll be able to see all of your clients at a high level, um, see who's losing the most weight, who's keeping to their goals uh, the best, um, just as importantly, who's not keeping to their goals. So um, you can sort of get them in for more sessions and, and take it from there. Um, and then you can just click through to any of the profiles. You can see every single session you've logged with them very easily. Um, and you can also uh, see an overall progress of the client and, and get their essential details like the telephone, email, and trainer. So it ties in very well with um, Infusionsoft. So um, it complements things like that very well. Uh, and finally, it will allow you to send custom reports to your clients. So whereas at the moment after each session, you might type out an enormous email or if you're smart, you've templated that email so you can just push that out. Um, it allows you to really quickly report to your clients. Um, so we, we've made it as easy as possible. And this app came uh, along based on feedback that we'd had that it's quite a difficult thing to report on. So if you visit this link, um, you, you can get your 30 day free trial. Um, <laughs> I've just seen one of the questions from Paul saying that's awesome. So thank you, Paul. Um, and uh, basically, um, yeah, if you register for that app, uh, we'll release it in the next 30 days. And uh, I'd love your feedback from people that are on the call. Um, so I'm happy to take any questions from any of you. So if you want to use the panel in uh, GoToWebinar and just ask any questions, I've had a couple in that um, I've had while I was talking. So 
I'll just cover these two points here. Uh, the first question I have is, I already have a website, but it's not converting like it should. Can you just change my site or do I have to start again? Uh, that's a great question. Um, we often find that um, websites don't convert um, because basically we work with, uh, with a ton of fitness professionals. And over the past couple of years, we've really refined our entire process to get websites up to an 8% conversion rate. Uh, most websites have a conversion rate to give you an idea of between 1% and 2%. So anybody that joins us gets the benefit of that. Now, we could spend a lot of time totally changing your website to make it similar to ours, but it would be a lot more expensive. So what we've got right now we find works really well, but feel free to book in a, a chat with me and I can always just cover what you've got at the moment and see if we can give you a little push in the right direction. Uh, another question I've just had, I use Facebook pages for my business. Why is a website better than this? Um, good question. Um, well, a website is, I see a website as a central hub for everything you do online. So for those of you uh, who are being intelligent using things like Infusionsoft um, or Grow Social, you need somewhere to point people once they've been on Facebook and once they've been on Twitter um, and even your Infusionsoft campaign. So you need a central hub, which you know converts well. Um, as a central reference point, and that allows you to do things like testing over time. Um, so yeah, it's it's really sort of it's really essential that you do have something as a central hub online. Um, one more question here: uh, How can I book a consultation tomorrow? Um, okay, uh, just drop me an email. Um, I've got my email on the screen there, Andy at startupactive.com. Um, I've got a couple of consultations tomorrow already, but I've got around three slots left. So just give me a shout if, uh, if you want a consultation and I'll be around all day tomorrow. Um, and then I've got another question here from Dwayne. Uh, I have a website that's ranking pretty well on Google now. Um, will a complete overhaul hurt my ranking? Uh, no, Dwayne, in short, it won't. So we, we can do things called 301 redirects, which basically means once your website goes live, we point all of your old website pages to the new one. So you might find um, your website has a, a short dip in ranking for perhaps a week, um, but and then it'll pick right back up and start overperforming. Um, so I'd be interested to, um, to take a look at that. Uh, and then a final um, question there from Maurice uh, saying, uh, is it activetoolkit.com? That's right. So this is the uh, domain here, www.activetoolkit.com. Um, so thanks for your time, guys. Uh, I, I'm around for a, another couple of hours. Happy to take any calls from anyone. Um, otherwise, uh, I'm around all day tomorrow, so feel free to book something in. Uh, thanks for your time, and uh, I'll speak to you all soon.